this is John Dickinson for Rhizome Lab, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the fundamental workflow for unwrapping any object inside Rhizome UV. So we'll start by loading our first object into the Rhizome UV interface, and this is going to be a cube. So come up to the file menu and choose load. And we're choosing load because this object hasn't had the UVs unwrapped yet. So just navigate to where you save the work files and inside the models folder, you'll find a file called cube.fbx. So double click that and that loads it into the interface. Now we have the 3D view over here and the 2D view here. And I just want to talk about keyboard shortcuts before we go any further. If you come up to the edit menu and choose keyboard mouse customizer, over here are the mouse interaction shortcuts and over here are the keyboard. And I'm using the built-in keyboard shortcuts. So if you're not, just click revert built-in, if you want to that is, just so you're using the same shortcuts as me. For mouse interactions, I'm actually using the C4D mouse preset. And you can click here and choose which one you prefer. I prefer C4D because I was used to using the C4D shortcuts when I was actually a C4D user. And I'm using Blender now, but currently the Blender shortcuts still have select as right mouse button, which is really foreign to me. So I prefer C4D. So choose the one you want and make sure you've saved and closed. And in the interface, if you just come over to the right hand side and just come down to the bottom here, you'll see a handy list of mouse interaction shortcuts that you can refer to. And I'm going to use these top three right now, Orbit, Zoom and Pan. So I'm just going to just zoom out a little bit and hold down the Alt key to orbit around this and middle mouse button. So these are really important keyboard shortcuts because you're going to need to set seams on your 3D model and you need to be able to very easily move around and just see where you want to place your seams. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the fundamental workflow for all objects when you're working in Rhizom UV. And that is to mark the seams, cut the seams, unwrap and pack. Okay, so this is the fundamental workflow no matter what you're unwrapping. So let's start setting some seams on this cube. And notice that the select tool is selected and also we're in edge mode. So I'm going to click on a seam to select it. If I click away, I can deselect it. So click and I'm just going to orbit around this, hold down shift because that's my keyboard shortcut, left mouse button shift, add select, and I'm going to add to this selection, just like this, and grab one down there, and one here. Okay, so now that we have those selected, next what we'll do is we'll cut them. Now you could use this button here to cut, but Get used to the hotkey, okay? The hotkey is C. So I'll hit C. And now they're cut. Next step is to unwrap. Once again, we could use the button up here, but I never use that. I just press the U key. And notice how in the 2D view, our object is unwrapped. But it isn't sitting within the UV tile. I'm going to undo that. And when I press the U key, my cursor was over the 3D model. If I move my cursor away from the 3D model and press U, see how it packs it automatically? Because I have only one object in my scene and it hasn't been unwrapped, if I press the U key with my cursor not over the object, it will automatically pack it. If my cursor is over the object, it won't pack it. Just something to keep in mind. All right, now notice also that it's used all of the available space. And it actually packed this vertically. And that's because initial orientation was set to V. I'm going to set this to H and then I'm going to hit P again. And now it's packed horizontally. So initial orientation is a panel that you'll use a lot. I'm just going to put that back on V and pack again. All right, so let's undo. We'll come right back to here. And I set my seams correctly and it unwrapped exactly how I wanted the final to look. But what if you don't select enough seams and then unwrap? Let's deselect a couple of these. I'm going to control click and control click. Now I'm going to hit C and U. And because once again, my cursor was not over the object, 
it did pack it, but notice how it's not fully unwrapped because we've missed a couple of those seams. And you'll also notice some of the faces here are pink and some are blue. And that's to do with distortion. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But the reason I wanted to go back and do this and miss a couple of edges is because I mean, with this cube, it's very straightforward to know which edges to select to get this looking right first time. But with most of your models, you will select a number of seams, you'll cut them, you'll unwrap them, and it won't be all of the seams that you need. You'll have to continue to add seams and cut those to get it looking right. That's pretty normal. So now that we've got this part of the way, we could either select the other seams that we need over here in 3D view, or we could just click on them here in 2D view. And once again, press C and U. And now we have this actually unwrapped in a different way. I'll move my cursor to the side here and press P again. And now it's packed vertically. So let's try this once more. What I want to do is I want to cut these here. So I'll select those and hit C. And if I select this one, notice how there's a line. That shows you that these two edges are actually connected on the model. So to weld those, I'm going to hit W. Just like that. And click on this one and hit W and P to pack. So that's the very basic workflow. Set your seams, cut your seams, unwrap and pack. If you haven't selected all the seams you need, then continue to select those seams and cut. And if you need to reconnect seams, use W for weld. All right, now I'm not gonna save this, but just notice that the file is the cube.fbx. So if we did save this, it would save the unwrapped model back to that cube.fbx file. Okay, let's try a different one. This time we're gonna load it a little bit differently. I've got the window open here with my models. What I'm gonna do is click on cylinder and I'm gonna drag it across this time. I'm not gonna save. And notice this time that the UVs have actually been unwrapped. That's because the UVs were already unwrapped in this model. And by dragging and dropping, it's the same as clicking load with UVs. Now, for me, this isn't an ideal unwrap. There's a few problems here. And what we could do is reload without the UVs and start from scratch. But we can also work with what we have here by once again welding. So if I just roll in with my mouse wheel and click on that edge, notice how there's that line again. So this edge here will connect to this edge here. So if I hit W, it has connected, but see how it's flipped? And that's because this face here is actually flipped. And that's indicated by this dark teal color. So I'm gonna undo that and just come over here and click on island mode, select that island. And we need to come up here and see our align, straighten and flip panel. This is gonna be a panel that you use a lot. So I just need to flip this and flip horizontal left will work okay, but you could also flip horizontal. And now you can see that dark teal color has disappeared. So once again, I'm gonna click and I've gotta be in edge mode. So I'll click that edge and W. Ah, great, that's how I want it. Let's try the other one. So we'll go to the top one this time. You can see it connects to there, W. And now that's connected, fantastic. I like to leave my caps for cylinders connected to the object. Okay, so let's now talk about this colorization. Now, this indicates distortion and the red faces indicate that faces are smaller than the original geometry and the blue indicates that faces are larger than the original geometry. It's a little bit tricky to see. If we come over to the 3D and just come to the top here, and just view it as a checkerboard. Now you can see it more clearly. You can see how it's stretched in this area and pinched in this area. So we need to do an optimization. And you can optimize by clicking on the button. But of course, the keyboard shortcut is going to be better, and that's O. So I'm just going to hit O. And sometimes you're going to have to hit O a few times to get this as optimized as it can be. But in this case, just hitting it once has optimized this perfectly. And you can see how this is now gray. This is no longer stretched. And see this little marker down here on the distortion bar 
is right in the middle, so it's on neutral. So this is important when we're texturing because it means we won't get any distortion in our textures. Okay, so let's hit P and pack this. And it packs it, but notice how it isn't straight. That's because sometimes Ryzen UV doesn't always get it right, so we have to give it a little bit of help. And we can do that by selecting an edge. And notice you'll see a vertical line, which joins that with this edge below, because these are actually connected on the model. So to align this, what we need to do is once again come over to the Align panel, and we'll click on this button here. So this is Align Island Horizontally to Selection, like that. And now if we pack, watch what happens. Huh? What happened? Well, we told it to pack, and packing, the packing operation, will pack, but it will rotate the islands as well. It won't keep their translation. So what we need to do is do that again. So we'll align the island, and we need to use this button here. This is Pack Translate. So the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift P. So if I hit Shift P, now it packs it with the optimal scale to fit within this tile, and it also keeps it straight. So now let's select this loop by double clicking. And let's align again. And hit Shift P. And there we go. Now we have that lined up. Now, another way to do the same thing is to set initial orientation to off and then just hit P. But Shift P is definitely faster. Okay, let's close that one now. I'm not going to save. And I'm going to just load and load the last model. This one here, Quad Sphere. And let's talk a little bit about loop selections. So once again, we're in select mode and we have edges selected. So if you double click on a loop, it will select that loop. And that's because that's what my keyboard shortcut is set to. You can see it here, DLMB. If I hold down shift and double click, I can add another loop. You could also do it this way. You could select, in this case, three edges and come up to select and choose select loops, and it will select the loops that those edges are part of. I'll just add to that by double clicking with shift held down and add to that. I'm going to hit C and U. Ah, so once again, my cursor was over the model and there's only one object which hasn't been unwrapped in this scene, so it hasn't packed it. So I'll just move over this side and hit P again. Now, this isn't the ideal unwrap, so let's just add that one and that one. C. If I move my cursor over the island and now hit U and hit P, and now it's packed. So we need to line this one up. I'm going to double click, align the island, and Shift P to pack. And that's now ready for texturing. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a good idea of the basics of using Ryzen UV. And once again, these are the steps that you use for any unwrap, no matter how complicated. Mark your seams, cut your seams, unwrap the object, pack the object. In the next tutorial, we'll talk more about marking seams and we'll cover a few of the different techniques that you can do that. For now, thanks for watching. This is John Dickinson for Ryzen Lab. See you in the next tutorial.